happy Saturday. It is a new week of vlogs and today we are off to go car shopping. Car shopping for me. So I think we're hitting Mazda and Hyundai today. See how that goes. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to this because I do not like car salesmen. I mean, most people don't like this experience, I guess. I bought mine on the internet. Yeah, my bot has gone on the internet, so I didn't have to do this. Uh, you know, it's never fun going into a sales pitch situation, especially as an introvert. Like, it goes against everything that I like in life <laughs> to have to go into this and negotiations and all that stuff. And then, on top of it, test driving makes me nervous. I don't like driving in a car with somebody else like trying to pitch to me and especially on the roads around here driving a car that isn't mine test driving makes me nervous but gotta do, gotta do it because I need the lease on this ends this month so have to make a decision one way or another on what we're doing and I haven't test driven a car since 2010 so Ooh. so hello I am upstairs in my office slash filming room because it is 8 o'clock and the Canon hates filming downstairs at this time of day and I want to talk to you about car shopping and everything and didn't want to have to do it with my face going out of focus every two seconds. So we did car shopping. We went to dinner at Texas Roadhouse with Mike's parents and Jeff. Jeff is here for the weekend. Um, he comes back to Houston every four to six months, I think it is, just to go have his cancer screening to make sure that nothing's going on with that and making sure he's still in remission. So he's here this weekend for that. So, car shopping. That was an experience. I purchased my Mazda 3 in 2010. So I hadn't had to do any car shopping since 2010. It had been a while. <laughs> and... I was honestly dreading it because I think car shopping is introvert nightmare city because car salesmen or any salesman really the stereotype of being very pushy and very fake and telling you what you want to hear and you have to withhold information there's negotiation and all of that is just nightmare fuel for introverts like this might be one of the car dealerships calling me <laughs> they've already tried once <laughs> so I started off the day I knew I wanted to go to Mazda since I had the Mazda before and I wanted to go back to Hyundai since that's what I'm currently driving is a 2016 Tucson but it's Mike's lease. I looked at the Kia Sportage because Mike informed me that Hyundai and Kia use the same factory so very similar cars and then I wanted to go see the new Tucsons. So I went to Mazda and realized that Mazda and Kia are owned by the same family so that was two birds with one stone. We were there for probably two and a half hours there, which we did test drive three different cars, but it was a long, long process. I actually surprisingly really liked the Sportage. I didn't think I'd like it at all. I had a pretty bad opinion of Kias from the past, but um, they definitely improved majorly in recent years and it was nice. I thought it drove really well. I was shocked at how much I liked it. And then drove the CX-5 and I was shocked by how much I didn't like it. I loved my Mazda 3. I thought it was super good to me for the nine years I had it. So I thought I would really love the CX-5 and I didn't. I felt like it still drove like my Mazda 3 even though it was an SUV and it just didn't feel as good as the Sportage just did. So crossed the CX-5 off right away. So then we went into the numbers portion of it which was what I was dreading. The test drive portion was fine. Our sales guy was fine like up until that point. Then we got to the numbers portion. He went off to his boss like deal or no deal style and they came back with a bonkers number like crazy we'd done our research beforehand so we knew kind of what numbers we were expecting i gave him the number that i was looking for he went back to his boss brought his boss back with him then the boss is trying to do the hard sell like okay you know this is really hard for me but you know if i can get you this number today will you guarantee to buy it today and I was like, uh, well, no, actually, we're still going to Tucson, so I'm just looking at numbers right now. And I went through this whole thing back and forth with them, really trying to hard sell me, doing it today, like, oh, well, okay, you can go to Tucson, but if you call by 545, we can still do this for you. You just call him right up, and we'll get that done for you. This whole thing. We escaped. 
I basically gave them what they wanted to hear was that it could still happen today, um, but that I was going to Tucson, so we left. It was a bummer because our actual sales guy had been great the whole time and then his boss came in and like ruined the whole experience. So to make a very long story short, the Hyundai experience was way better. The salesman was definitely a little on the chatty side for me as an introvert, but he was just making conversation. It wasn't salesman stuff. It was just straight the two New Yorkers talking to each other because he happened to be from New York. So they were talking pizza and bagels and <laughs> all that stuff. So aside from just being introverted out for the day, the sales experience was way better. The car is pretty much the exact one that I have now. They just changed the engine and I'm not going for the full bells and whistle one because I don't want to have as high of a car payment as what Mike has had. So I'm going down a little bit on all the features, but Otherwise, interior is the exact same as what I've been driving. They changed the screen a little bit, but it's everything else I'm familiar with. It drove like the car I currently drive, minus the fixed engine, which is a plus. So we went back in the office and I was telling Mike, it's like, it really comes down to numbers at this point. If, you know, this is like astronomical price, then maybe I'll stick with the Sportage. And they came back with a price that was completely reasonable. A hundred dollars less <laughs> off from the start than what Kia was saying per month. And that's without me even trying to negotiate it. I'm still going to negotiate a little bit on it because I'm not just going to take the number that they gave, but it was a very reasonable number and I feel comfortable negotiating it down a little bit, not having to negotiate it down by like $200 like at Kia. <laughs> that's the plan. I'm sticking with the Tucson, I believe. I'll probably give them a call on Monday because dealerships here are closed on Sundays. Probably give him a call on Monday, get all that worked out, and then I think I'm gonna have a 2019 Tucson. That's mine. So it's gonna be my first time leasing, but I think with how fast technology is moving in cars these days, that I wanna give leasing a shot because just between the Tucson I have and this Tucson, there's so much new like safety features and different backup cameras and lane assist and adaptive cruise control and all this stuff that's just coming out at crazy speeds. So I'm gonna lease this time and see how it goes. It's new territory for me. So, so now the fun part is going to do all that paperwork, but that's for another day. All right, I already turned off my lights, but Kia tried to call while we were at dinner and that was um, our actual car salesman guy, the one that worked with us all day that just tried to call me again. So on top of pushy sales, pushy follow-up. And he just texted me too, so poor sweet boy. <laughs> He just texted me. Oh, oh, it's not going well. He knows it. Ash just dragged in his binky and inadvertently tucked in Bean. And I don't think Bean's too upset about it. Did you get tucked in by your brother? <laughs> oh, it's family cuddle time. I'm watching husky videos on YouTube. And this one just came out of the bedroom and just started staring at me like, Mom, what are you doing? Groceries done for the week and, more importantly, my Starbucks cheat day choice was an iced white mocha today. Yes, delicious coffee. I don't get Starbucks hardly ever anymore, so a delightful treat today. So we just got back from dinner. We went and had fajitas for cheat day. But I bought these back in April, I believe. It was the Easter flavor carrot cake for this year. And I've had them sitting in the top of the cabinet. I told Mike that they were for science, so we had to wait for a cheat day. And I went to pick them up yesterday, and uh, this is the state of them. You didn't say who's cheat day. <laughs> that is true. It's, uh, every day is a cheat day for Mike. Um, <laughs> someone, someone got to them. Now, he did save me some, because he knew I still had to for science it. <laughs> There's a little bandit who had already gotten into it. Oh, so Mike obviously enjoyed them. He's a fan. So let's see, carrot cake flavored Oreos. Colby's not involved with this. Every day I'm huffling. I'm even wearing the Hufflepuff yellow. Yay, Hufflepuff. So anyway, we have the cookie. Let's for science. Definitely tastes like the cream cheese frosting. I don't know that I got a whole lot of carrot cake in that. It's not bad. 
but it kind of just tastes like the cream cheese frosting and the frosting is a little overwhelming to me. You get a little bit of the cinnamon, the spice flavor of carrot cake. I think one is plenty for me, so Mike can have the other two that are in there because not my favorite. Okay. I wouldn't get them again. Good they're call. Good. They're okay. Yeah. But... I'm with you. Fine, but not great. Sunday evening, so I'm going to do my planner and start watching Chernobyl because I've been hearing really good things about this. Another HBO show, so Chernobyl it is. Here is the planner with the dread-inducing music from Chernobyl in the background. Fascinating but tough to watch so far. There's the planner. I switched to my flamingos because it's officially summer, so flamingo time. Well, this one got a clean bill of health, and now this one is having tummy issues. You have a tummy issues, my bear. What did you eat? Mm, there's no telling with this one. He puts everything in his mouth, so there's really no telling. He might just have a little stomach bug, but he's having a rough time. And Mom's having a rough time on top of it because somebody keeps waking me up multiple times a night to go outside. So, last night, he woke me up at 3 a.m. and 5 a.m. The night before that, I think we did 4.30 and 7.30. And the night before that was 4.30 was when it really started, I think. So hopefully everything's okay and we don't have to take him to the vet. But keeping an eye on him, making sure nothing else happens. Hopefully it's just a little tummy, tummy bug. It's time for So You Think You Can Dance. Yes. First audition. <laughs> Oh, this season's gonna kill me. Jeez. Oh, I love this show so much. So I feel a little bit of influence from World of Dance on this new stage. I feel like they're taking a little bit from the voice as well with having the families and having the judges come out and talk to the contestants after they make it. Which, you know, sometimes change is good. And anything that's gonna keep this show going on for more seasons I'm down for unless it's like a huge format change so little things like updating a stage and changing the audition process I'm okay with it as long as we get some amazing dancers and we get to keep this show because this is still by far my favorite dance show that's on TV I just couldn't get into world dance so this is my show side note if you're a so you think fan you should follow Lauren Froderman on Instagram because she's hilarious so this cracked me up, so I sent her a message, <laughs> and she actually writes back. She's awesome. Love her. We only have two dogs at the moment. Mike had to take Colby to the vet. I am getting ready to go to work, leaving these two by themselves, but yeah, Colby's just having a rough time with his stomach. Mike took a shift last night and stayed out here with Colby because the past, the previous three nights, Colby was waking me up every time and Mike was able to, he kind of woke up for it but went right back to sleep whereas I was like getting up and staying up with him until he was ready to go back to bed. So Mike took a shift last night and let me sleep through the night by myself in the bedroom and he said Colby woke him up once and then had a minor accident in the house. So that's four nights in a row. Took him to the vet. Hopefully they can give him something to slow all that down. Poor guy. Who knows what he ate. He like I said, he's a goat. He puts everything in his mouth. I have no idea. No idea what he could have possibly ingested or just got a stomach bug. Who knows? But hopefully my little bear is going to be okay and Michael give me the update. The other update is that I called back Hyundai yesterday when I got off work. Talked to our agent. He was totally chill again. He had been doing some research for me on seeing if he could get the color I want and unfortunately sounds like I can't get my top choice color. So today he's gonna go through and see what other color options I have and talk to me. But I was able to negotiate a couple more things to take some items off the price and got the monthly rate down as well. So I'm happy with the number we're at now. And if he'll get me the color list today, then we'll probably go take care of that tomorrow. So as of tomorrow, I might have my own brand new Tucson. So I'm home from work and the dogs are especially worked up because Colby gets a special diet. He gets rice and chicken. So it's almost 7 o'clock and they haven't had dinner yet because dad had to cook dinner for the dogs. 
So they're looking at me like, Mom, Mom, Dad has forgotten us. Hi. So you got some antibiotics. And I think you got a puppuccino too. <laughs> that probably wasn't part of the prescription, but probably helped you feel better because Dad spoils you. So let's get you some dinner, huh? Some fancy chicken and rice. You're gonna love this. Okay, so tonight was my later night at work. Not super late, that'll be Thursday, but a later night. So I'm going to make us these pizzas and uh, see how they are. See if they're a good option for nights like these where I'm just too tuckered to do a full meal, so. Okay, these look pretty darn good. I am excited for these. I hope they are as delicious as they look. So it's much later in the evening, but I wanted to say that we actually really enjoyed those pizzas before I forget about it. I would put it at like a Red Baron level of frozen pizza. So kind of a lower end frozen pizza where the crust doesn't really crisp right and it's not really anything resembling actual crust, but yet it's frozen pizza. <laughs> I'm good with it. So we'll definitely buy those again. Those get a thumbs up from me, unlike those real good food chicken crust atrocities. So <laughs> these are actually good. We'll buy them again for one of these nights where we just need a quick meal and uh, stay on keto with pizza. So good morning, it's Wednesday and we've got a tropical disturbance sitting on top of us. So it's gonna be a rainy, dreary day. Hopefully it just stays like this and doesn't uh, get all crazy like a few weeks ago. Don't need any more flooding and scariness. So yeah, I'm off to work. I have a very short day at work today. I'm probably only gonna be at work for like two or three hours. And then home and hopefully going to figure out my car situation. Okay, I'm home from work. That part of the day is over. Good chunk of the afternoon, do what I want. Plus I'm gonna go get my car taken care of. Planning to pick it up on Monday, but at least just go do paperwork today. So now I'm gonna sit down and do some editing, cause why not? I'm home early, got some time, might as well. And I get to hang out with this nugget. Who seems like he's feeling better and he's enjoying his new chew. And shedding all over the sofa. Foster also decided he wanted a chew. This one, in adding to his 5,000 husky behaviors, is a pain in the butt to give pills to. The other two dogs, you give them a pill and they just like gulp it down no problem because it's in cheese or meat or whatever. He sits there and chews the cheese and the meat off from around the pill and then spits out the pill. <laughs> you are a pain. You're a pain. You're adorable, but you are a pain in the booty. So it took me three tries. Oh no. Oh no. Get it. Okay. There we go. Took me three tries to give him his pill this morning. So, yeah, a little stinker. There it is, guys. My new car. And there's the old car. Three, two cars away is my old car. My new car. Okay, so before I drive it into the garage, here it is. So the main difference is they got a brand new screen otherwise it's very similar to my previous Tucson that I've been driving 250 miles on it and there it is oh the dog just realized I'm home hi Ash <laughs> oh, there it is my new baby and we got too late to make dinner so we went to Jimmy John's and I've got a Italian nightclub lettuce wrapped Yum yum. And Mike got the same thing, but on bread. Okay, Foster's choking, so <laughs> he's been working hard on this chew. Oh, what a day, what a day. So I have a new car. I went up there intending just to do paperwork and pick up the car on Monday. And he's like, <laughs> uh, I'm definitely gonna send you home with the car today. Cause he's like, these things have been hard to find. I don't want someone like taking it from you. So I went ahead and brought it home. So, oh my gosh, Foster, you're killing me. <laughs> so 
I don't know when we'll turn in the other Tucson. The other Tucson isn't due until July 4th, I think, but I have mine. I have it for the number that I wanted. Hope you guys don't mind dog coughing in the background because <laughs> he won't stop chewing to go get a drink of water. Anyway, yeah, so I have mine. I got it for the number I wanted. It's not the color I wanted. I don't know if I already talked about this. I don't remember what I talked about at all, but I wanted white or gray, the same color that we already had, and they didn't have any of that available. He had originally said he couldn't do the number I asked for, and we kind of negotiated to the middle. And then he's like, look, I've got a silver one. I know silver wasn't your first choice, but it's your favorite out of the ones we have. And if you're okay with that, I'll go ahead and give you the number you asked for. He offered that without me even having to ask for it. The whole process negotiating with them was so much better than the previous place. So much better than the Kia place. I didn't really have to work that hard on negotiation because they came with a really solid number to begin with. So anyway, I think this is way too much car talk for a vlog. I apologize. It's a big event in my life. I haven't had to do anything car related for nearly 10 years. <laughs> it's a big life event. So I have the Tucson. I'm leaning toward, I feel like my previous two cars were guys. Do you guys name your cars? Because my two previous cars, actually my past three cars were gentlemen. So my first car was a Dodge Neon and I named him JD, which was short for James Dean because he was a rebel. Because as it turns out, we're fairly certain he was actually a lemon. There was always something wrong. Like I can't even, that's a whole nother vlog topic for some day of how my first car was a lemon because <laughs> there are so many stories of ridiculously absurd things that happen with this car. So then my second car was a Mustang that was a hand-me-down for my dad because JD was such a terrible situation. I got my hand-me-down Mustang and I named him Torpedo because he looked like a silver bullet. And then once his engine died, I got Tornado, which was my Mazda. And I had that Mazda for nine years. Now I have another silver car and I'm thinking, I'm leaning toward Luna because I think she's a lady. I think this car is a lady. And I was trying to think last night what I would call her. She's silver. And I was thinking of the moon. And obviously I love Harry Potter and Luna's one of my favorite characters. So I was thinking silver, like the moon, Luna. What do you guys think? Also comment down below and let me know if your car has a name, if you name your cars, and do you follow the rule that all cars are female? Because I know a lot of people say that all cars are female. I don't subscribe to that. My first three cars were guys, but this one I think might be a lady. So I think I'm going with Luna. Let me know down below what you name your car. Good morning and goodbye, because I'm off to work and it's a long day today. So I'm gonna be at work from 9.30 to probably 9.30. So see you later. That was a long day. But I'm home. I got Freddy's for dinner, so I'm gonna have my lettuce wrapped burger. That's it, Mike isn't feeling well. I'm not gonna vlog him, but now he caught a cold. So it's just been a bad streak of luck out here. Colby's feeling better though. So we got one patient feeling better, one patient going downhill. Uh, life. So hey guys, it is Friday evening. Actually afternoon, I got off early today, but just want you to enjoy the view out of the moon roof a few more times because my new one does not have that. So uh, I am still driving this one for a few more days until we turn it in. Um, Cause I still need to like, you know, I mean I have insurance on the other one, but I need to go get it arranged. And why would I drive my fancy new car and possibly mess it up when I could still drive this one for a few more days, right? I don't know, maybe I'm weird like that. So, yeah, there it is. I have some good boys. Even though dad's gone, they were good boys. They were good boys, you see, oh yes. Where's my other good boys? Come see me, come see me, good boy. Yeah. <laughs> and my other good boy, hello. Oh, hi, you're coming real close, hi. Hi, 
Hi, hi Nugget. Hi, hi. Hello. I had kind of a hectic start to the day, so I honestly don't remember what I've already discussed. But <laughs> Mike is gone for the weekend in St. Louis. Got home. It's like four o'clock. They think it's dinner time, even though it's four o'clock. So I am going to change into some normal clothes and I am going to run to Target because we have a work event tomorrow. It's outside for like four hours. Current forecast has it as 97 degrees, feels like 106. We're supposedly going to tie the record for heat from 1948. <laughs> and we have an event tomorrow, four hours outside. Hopefully we'll be in the shade for the majority of that. Pale is, I'm definitely gonna have like tons of sunscreen on it. SPF 50 for sure, but I want to try to see if I can find um, some sort of cute work appropriate outfit that doesn't involve pants, <laughs> shorts. Not like I'm going pantless, but looking for some work appropriate shorts because the work appropriate shorts I wore on Memorial Day were falling off of me, which is a good thing but I need to look for some shorts a size down now that I've lost 16-ish pounds. Uh, I need some pants that actually fit my body. She's like a traditional red and black lady. There you go. Red and black ladybug. <laughs> Hi, ladybug. Hi, ladybug. Target is speaking my language. Oh yeah. All the cactus goodies that I need, right? Oh, look, little cactus pinata. It's so cute. Check this out. New Target hangers. Strange, but I like them. They look classier. <laughs> uh, excuse the AC if it's really loud. It is 97 degrees out. But no luck on finding work shorts, so I think I'm just going to go with the pair I already have. They'll just be a little big, or whatever. But I did find a cute shirt to wear tomorrow, so got that at least. And I'll show you some of the other items I got when I get home. Got some fun stuff. I might actually try to use the pool on Sunday when I have my day off. And uh, I'll just wait and show you when I get home. So, so I'll show you my haul when I get home. But now I need to figure out some food. So here is my Target haul. I got a raft. So I'd like to use the pool this weekend because it's 97 degrees we might already be to the point of the year where the pool is too hot to use we'll find out this is the joy of having a pool in Texas you get like two weeks to use it for the record I was really tempted to buy like the adorable cactus or the adorable giant leaf or the adorable planet floats but those are 25 to 30 dollars because they're adorable this was $6.99 so I went with functional over Instagrammable because uh, good odds that Colby's just gonna eat this anyway. So figured seven dollars I could I could splurge on that. Speaking of Colby, I got these for him. They're basically water guns, but also pool noodles. And um, Colby is obsessed with water. He loves chasing the pool cleaner because it sprays water from time to time. If the pool guy is here cleaning the pool, Colby wants to be out there with him so that he can get water dumped on him. If you have a hose, he goes crazy for it. So got some water guns to play with Colby in the water, hopefully on Sunday. So there was one more thing, but I can't put it in the vlog yet because I'm not sure if I'll get to see Mike before this vlog goes up and just in case he's like real prompt on watching the vlog. I don't want the surprise to be ruined. So I got a surprise. It'll be in next week's vlog. I've been catching up on some YouTube and now I'm going to start watching episode four of Chernobyl. So I've been really enjoying this on HBO. I mean, enjoying in the terms of I really love history and Chernobyl, something I've been interested in, in the past. Definitely a fascinating and terrifying story. Some of the details on this. I had never really realized before, probably because when I read about it, I was much younger and didn't really understand the potential global ramifications of if this had gone even worse than it did. Really well done, as you expect from an HBO show. So painful to watch at times, but worth it. So gonna watch episode four, and then that's probably gonna end the night for me. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and sign off for the vlog. So I will see you guys again next week. Bye.